Hello guys, S2W here with your next casual consumer's perspective review. For today's video, I will be reviewing sneaker that in my opinion have become the underdogs due to another similar silhouette but way more hyped up release that dropped a week earlier than this one. It is a collab by Nike with Japanese fashion designer Jun Takahashi and his fashion label. Today, we have the Nike Daybreak by Undercover in the Blue Jay colorway here for a review. If my video has helped you in any way today, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to help my channel out. Now for those who don't know, Undercover is known for its influence from punk and street style fashion. And for this collab, both parties have decided to revitalize a classic 1980 Nike sneaker called the Daybreak, one of the world's first iconic running shoe. The Blue Jay colorway I have for this video is a part of the two colorways that made its debut for purchase, the other being a minimal black and white colorway. As of this video's upload date, the second wave of this Daybreak collab released as well, but for women's only. And even a week after its first initial release, they are still available on many sites online and most likely in store too, so it's still somewhat attainable at retail. Let's take a closer look at these sneakers. Teased since 2018 at Paris Fashion Week, this collab follows a very sleek and futuristic change, yet it retained half of its original aesthetic as well. This includes the use of suede overlays and a base nylon textile for its upper. The suede feels very soft and hairy, and will easily chain shading as I brush against the smooth surface. This overlay is seen at the toe box, the heel counter of the shoe, and also the eye stay paneling surrounding the flat white laces that comes with this sneaker. They're using this special type of suede that adds a nice tonal depth to the shoe with its scruffy look. As for the nylon upper, it feels very thin and flexible, and because of its properties, it does crinkle everywhere. Unfortunately, unlike a shirt, you can't really iron it out, so if you are interested in this silhouette, just be prepared that the upper may wrinkle easily after wears. Both the medial and lateral side of the sneaker looks like a mirror image of each other, while on this colorway, a white Nike swoosh is stitched on at both sides. The swoosh is made out of leather, and although it looks luxurious, it does feel very thin without much plushness to it. My guess is to keep the sneaker lightweight, but it definitely doesn't feel like it's very robust for scratches. Then the silhouette becomes a lot more exciting and special starting at the heel portion. This swoosh gets interrupted with a uniquely designed triangular plastic heel panel for added stability and support. The mold for this heel counter has rounded sharp curves and hard toothed edges, decorated with grey paint splatter to give it an extra punk vibe. Personally, it's comparable to a sports car spoiler with a modern look yet futuristic feel. The only worry I have is that this plastic panel is only attached to the midsole or bottom portion of the sneaker, whereas the rest is essentially hovering in midair. This means it could potentially snap in half if something hits the top of this panel really hard. So just keep that in mind if you're using it for more active purposes. On the topic of the heel area, a piece of leather flapped downwards with the undercover U branding printed on the surface. This black leather stretches towards the internal wall lining of the back wall as well, and again, although premium, there won't be much ankle cushioning around here. The shoe comes with foam insoles too that are glued down to the footbed. You can take them out, but you will have to forcibly rip them out. On top of the sneakers, the tongue is made with thin nylon as well, hooked up with an extra branding patch at the top for this collab. Then as for the midsole cushioning, it is painted in grey with white paint splashes for aesthetic purposes, and of course, more undercover branding on the lateral profile. The cushioning is just a regular Nike foam midsole, which offer a lightweight and standard cushioning for all day comfort. And as for the outsole, it follows its heritage by including a waffle designed rubber outsole that extends up to the front and back, paying homage to the original look of this running shoe. Anyways, here are some Nike Daybreak by Undercover in the Blue Jay colorway fit footage. Sizing wise, as a wide footer, I went true to size and I find it perfect for me. If you have narrow feet though, you may be able to go half size down for a tighter and more stabilized fit. But if you can, please do try them in store as they are still available at retail. Comfort wise, this shoe was a lot more cushioned than I thought. Maybe because it's a combo of Nike's standard foam and the foam insole, but it surely does not feel rock solid on feet. Given, it's not like the other softer technologies that Nike has introduced lately, but it is still a very viable option for a daily sneaker. Almost like wearing a slightly heavier but more durable Flyknit trainer or Flyknit racer. The heel sits a bit higher above the ground too in my opinion, so if you want a slight edge for a height boost, this sneaker can help you elevate that. Lookwise, I feel like it's a great collab. Sadly, these were overshadowed by another Nike collab that dropped one week earlier who had a much higher demand. And yes, I'm talking about the Sakai collab. That silhouette coincidentally used the same base silhouette as this undercover collab, and when words got out that the Sakai collab had extra freebies such as additional lacings, 
at the same price point for retail for $210 Canadian, the former is just better for value. Especially when you compare the Sakai's with these undercover, these undercover daybreaks have less of that bigger transformation or wow factor than the Sakai's do. And like I've mentioned, the timing for these undercover daybreak happened only a week after, so sadly it became the second option. If only if they released a month or two away from the Sakai's, I think it could have sold out easily everywhere. As always, throw me some likes if you like this video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments if you share different feelings than me about the sneaker. Truthfully, these daybreaks are not a bad collab, but sadly, they were just outshined by another collab that released too closely to these. That's it for today, S2W signing off.